So I, 18 female, recently celebrated my 18th birthday almost three days ago. I live with my mom, stepdad, stepsister. My stepsister is 15 years old, but she's the worst 15 year old I've had the misfortune of meeting. She's arrogant, mean, and always tries to compete with me. We hate each other and always have because she's just a crappy human being, that's all. My dad passed away when I was three years old and I barely have any memories of him. But I do have plenty of memories of fighting with my mom from my childhood, which made me think that had my dad still been around, I would have had an easier time growing up with my mom. She married my stepdad when I turned 16 and he moved in with us, but she'd been with him since I was 13. So after three years of dating, they got married and moved in together. Even before their marriage, my stepsister was a total brat. And once my stepdad moved in, she became much more difficult to tolerate because she was now 10 times more annoying and constantly kept trying to take a dig at me and pick fights. I told my mother about this several times and even complained about her behavior to her dad, but they dismissed it as normal sibling rivalry and refused to interfere as they believed that she'd grow out of it. But I knew the real reason that they wouldn't interfere was because my stepsister was the golden child of the family for both of them. Of course, my stepdad would always take her side since she was his biological daughter, but even my mother would go out of her way for her and that was what really hurt because she'd never do that for me. Growing up with my mom, I'd realized that we were fundamentally different people and she didn't like it one bit. I was a little tomboyish as a kid and was more into sports and games and cars. While my mother wanted me to learn makeup right from the age of seven, learn to do my hair and wear dresses instead of my shorts. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with these things, but they just weren't me and I didn't feel like I could properly express myself if I was constantly trying to impress my mom. And that led to a lot of fights between us. She always pushed me to do more feminine things when I didn't want to and just be a mini her all the time. But I didn't like that and would fight back. I was my own person, but she never understood that, let alone respect it. But my stepsister was the kind of daughter she'd always wanted, which is why I guess she took a liking to her instantly. And that really broke me even as a teen because here I was trying my best to make my mother like me for who I am and suddenly this girl comes along and takes her away from me. For my stepsister, my mom became the mother that I'd always wanted and there was really nothing sadder than that for me. It was bad enough that my mom was now on her side and my stepsister would make it even worse with her arrogant behavior. I just couldn't stand her and wanted to leave for college as soon as I could. So I was really happy on my 18th birthday because I'd graduated from high school and soon enough I'd be on my way to the college of my choice. I already had a sports scholarship in the bag because I play lacrosse and I'm supposed to make the move in the fall. So I'm all set to leave this place behind and that's why. I'd expected my mother to surprise me for my 18th birthday since this would be the last one I'd be celebrating at home with her. This year onwards I'd only come back home for the holiday so I expected some enthusiasm from her. But I guess I'd forgotten just how unwelcome I was ever since my stepsister came along. I was a fool to expect anything at all. Not only had my mother not done anything special for me, but in the afternoon when the house was empty, she sat me down to have an important discussion about the future. She told me that my stepsister was supposed to start college in a few years time. And since she wasn't a student athlete, she wouldn't have a sports scholarship as I did. And her grades weren't good enough for her to qualify for an academic scholarship either which meant that she'd have to pay her tuition in full. So my mother now wanted me to help pitch in for my stepsister's college fund or else I wouldn't be welcome to live here anymore. I was shocked by that last bit. 
and when I asked her to repeat herself, she explained that she and my stepdad had decided that they'd start saving up for my stepsister's college fund now to avoid any financial trouble in the future. And since I was an adult now, they expected me to contribute as well, or else they wouldn't let me live here anymore. As a member of this household, I had to pitch in or leave permanently. I was stunned that she was even making this demand because obviously I wouldn't be able to help and to say that they would cut me off if I didn't help my horrible stepsister out was just nuts. I couldn't believe that my mother was saying this and I could literally feel my stomach drop because of how serious she seemed about this. I didn't know what to say to her at that point and I definitely didn't want to fight with her. So I told her I needed some time to think and went back to my room. My mom's a nurse and my stepdad is a pediatrician. Both of them work at the same hospital and that's how they met as well. I don't know what their exact income is, but I'm sure they make enough money to support my stepsister without getting me involved and making me support her as well. It was just ridiculous that she even asked me to contribute and for someone who doesn't even like me. Had my stepsister and I had a good relationship, then I might have even considered it, but she was a horrible human being and I hated her. So why on earth would I contribute to her college fund? It didn't make any sense. Also, I was going away to college myself in a few months, so I don't know how exactly she expected me to send money when I myself would need them to send me money. Even if hypothetically I did get a job there and started working to support myself, it seemed unfair to ask me to pitch in for my stepsister when I would probably need that money for personal use. I couldn't even say no because of the threat of getting kicked out since I would definitely want to come back for the holidays and didn't want to stay on campus throughout the year and I don't know if I'd even get approval for that. I'd basically be homeless once I'm done with college and that was a terrifying thought. I mulled this over in my head and came to the conclusion that there was just no way I could make this work and neither was this fair for me. But instead of arguing with my mother, I decided to talk to my grandparents this time. I didn't want to negotiate with my mom, only to be let down in the end. And honestly, I just didn't think the argument would even be worth it. She was never going to see my side and she'd always only think about her favorite, not me. My mom had basically forbidden me from speaking to my grandparents. Her parents, my dad's parents, live out of state and we're just occasionally in touch. She said that my grandparents were fragile and didn't need me troubling them and I was only allowed to talk to them about safe topics and I could only visit them with her, never unsupervised. I'd once dropped by their house unannounced in my junior year to spend time with them on my own and when I came back and told mom she'd been hysterical and I decided not to visit them by myself again because I didn't need that drama. I'd had a nice time at their place though and they didn't seem very sickly or fragile to me but I didn't want to cross my mother so I'd follow the rules she'd set for interacting with my grandparents until now. However, that day I knew that I would have to break the rules and go speak to them if I wanted them to help me convince my mother. My grandparents were probably the only people in the world who could force my mother to do something and this time I really needed them on my side to avoid getting kicked out because there was just no way I was getting a job and working through college only to pitch in for my horrible stepsister's college fund. So after a while I decided to talk to my mother and somehow get her to repeat the conditions she'd set for me so that I could record her saying it. I love my grandparents and I know they love me but since I was going to them to ask for help to stand up against their own daughter. I thought it would be in my best interest to make sure I had all the proof I needed so that they'd believe me. I kept the sound recorder on and spoke to my mother asking her to tell me exactly what she expected of me once I was in college and she repeated herself. She sounded exasperated but thankfully she didn't think much of it and didn't seem to suspect a thing. Then I told her I was going out with my friends and I'd tell her my decision once I was back home. 
She seemed okay with that and because it was my birthday, she didn't push much either and let me go. So then I went straight to my grandparents' house a few streets away and told them everything. And by everything, I mean everything. Initially, I'd only meant to tell them about the absurd demand that my mother had made and how she'd kicked me out if I didn't contribute. But soon enough, I found myself spilling over with emotions and then I was just crying while I tried to explain my situation to them. I guess I wasn't dealing with my mother's rejection of me as well as I'd like to believe. I told them all about how badly I was treated at home and they seemed shocked while I was talking because whenever I visited them with my mother, I seemed relatively happy and relaxed, but that was just a front that I was forced to put on because my mother didn't want my grandparents to worry about me or her because they were too old and sick. Honestly, I never bought that theory because my grandparents were just in their early 60s and looked absolutely healthy to me. I feel like the only reason my mother didn't want me to talk to them and be around them was because she was afraid that I'd blurt out the truth about her someday and her parents would get to know how she'd been mistreating me, her own daughter, for the sake of her stepdaughter. Then her parents would be furious with her and she'd be in huge trouble, which is precisely what happened? After I told my grandparents everything, they comforted me for a while and told me that they'd fix everything. I didn't know what exactly they meant by that, but my grandpa looked really pissed. Once I'd regained my composure, they handed me a hundred dollar bill and told me to get out with my friends that evening because it was my 18th birthday and I should make it special for myself. They promised me that they'd make everything right and I wouldn't have anything to worry about by the time I was back, which made me feel a lot better. So I decided to hang out with a couple of my friends because they'd been trying to get me to come hang out with them that day anyway. I must have been out with my friends really late because I didn't want to go home and also because I was finally celebrating my 18th the way it was meant to be celebrated. Around 9... I received a text from my grandparents asking me to come back to their place instead of going home, so I did exactly that. Surprisingly, I hadn't received any texts or calls from my mother even then, which was strange because if my grandparents had spoken to her regarding what I told them that day, then she would have been dying to confront me about it. So it seemed a little weird that she was so eerily silent. I went back to my grandparents' house at 10 and once I'd freshened up, my grandparents sat me down and told me that they'd talk to my mother and now I had nothing to worry about. They told me that they'd asked my family to leave the house they'd been living in so that they could transfer the ownership to me. Apparently, that house had been a wedding gift from my grandparents to my parents and they'd been living there ever since. But today, once they'd learned how my mother had been treating me, they realized that they needed to do something about this. They talked to her and asked her nicely to take back whatever she'd said to me and treat me better. But instead of admitting that she'd messed up, she decided to be disrespectful and told my grandpa to mind his own business instead of interfering in matters he didn't understand. She actually believed that now that I was an adult, I needed to start earning and giving back to the family or else I wouldn't have a place in her home anymore. That infuriated my grandpa because of how unfair it was and after a really nasty argument, he told her that she needed to vacate that house since it was still legally his property as he'd never formally transferred the ownership to her and he still had the power to evict her. So she could either choose to be a better mom to me or leave the house and she'd chosen the latter. No surprises there. She told my grandpa that her priority was her own family now and not me. As if I wasn't a part of her family and wasn't related to her by blood and said that she'd empty that house by the end of the week if that's what he wanted. Then disconnected the call. So that was why I hadn't heard from my mother My grandparents also explained that it wasn't just what I told them today that had made them take this drastic step, but it was how she'd been behaving with them for the past couple of years. Ever since she got married, she believed that her husband and her stepdaughter were the only family she needed now. 
and would visit her parents only once or twice every two months. They'd given up trying to make her visit more often, but they would ask her to at least let me talk to them or come visit them. And to that, she'd always make up some excuse and claim that I was too busy, which I really wasn't. She just didn't want to let me come see my grandparents out of fear that I would tell them the truth. She'd very cleverly manipulated all of us into staying away from one another for her own selfish reasons. And now it had all finally blown up in her face because now she had to vacate the house she'd lived in for almost two decades, all thanks to her manipulation and deceitfulness. I was really upset that she decided to choose my stepsister over me, but I was even more disgusted and angry that she'd actually thought that this was all justified somehow. I was disheartened at the time, but I'd also given up any hope that my mother would ever love me as much as she loved my stepsister and had started to see her for the person she really was. I didn't expect anything from her anymore. I was actually kind of glad that I was spending the night at my grandparents' place because I absolutely didn't want to see or hear from my mother at the time. I hated the fact that I was her daughter and I hated her for what she'd done even more. The next morning, I went back home with my grandpa to pack some of my clothes and essential belongings so that I could move in and live with my grandparents until my mother and her family vacated the house. It was around noon, but nobody had left for work and even my stepsister was at home. All of them looked angry and disappointed, but I didn't speak to them and walked straight past them to get to my room and pack my stuff up. My grandpa had accompanied me inside and helped me pack. But around 10 minutes into it, my mother came into the room and demanded to speak to me in person. I said no, but she kept insisting, so I finally caved and let her take me aside so that we could talk. She told me that she'd been bluffing on the phone with her dad, but she couldn't actually afford to move out on such short notice. And now she needed me to talk to grandpa to fix this. I was appalled that she even had the audacity to make another demand from me after whatever she'd done. So I obviously said no right to her face point blank and told her that she'd lost the right to even speak to me after what she'd done. She'd made her choice and now she had to stick to it. And then she said that she didn't really mean for me to get hurt and was only trying to teach me to be responsible when she asked me to pitch in for my stepsister's college fund. She had tears in her eyes while she told me that if I just deemed her worthy of one conversation instead of going straight to my grandparents to complain about her, then I would have known that my mom didn't actually mean anything she'd said. She only wanted to teach me to be responsible with my money and all the money that I would send for my stepsister's college fund would actually go into a separate account that she planned to let me have later on. If I talked to her about my feelings just once, then she told me the truth and I would have known that she was never going to kick me out and especially not over something as petty as this. But apparently I would get her kicked out of her own home and that really hurt her. She told me I was free to do whatever I wanted to, but asked me to remember that she did love me and always wanted the best for me. I was dumbstruck and had no idea what to say. It's been two days and I haven't talked to anyone about this. I don't even know if my mom was being honest or not, but the guilt is just eating away at me. I can't talk to my friends about this and I definitely can't talk to my family, so I'm here for answers. AITA for complaining to my grandparents about my mother when she threatened to kick me out if I didn't pitch in for my stepsister's college fund. Update one. Okay, so first of all, thanks for all the advice and kind words. I did tell my grandparents about what my mother had told me the other day. And he seemed really skeptical about it because he thought it was really unlikely that my mother intended to save that money for me and was definitely bluffing right now to manipulate me yet again so that I'd let them stay. And I agreed with my grandpa. 
I'd become a little emotional, but honestly, there was no way my mom had suddenly turned a new leaf. The only way to find out whether she was sincere or not was to put her to the test on the off chance that she actually meant what she'd said the other day. So I called her and told her that I'd thought things over, but I still would prefer for my grandpa to transfer the ownership of the house to me now, just in case. She sounded a little shocked in the beginning and tried to reassure me that I had nothing to worry about. But when I insisted, she became hostile and started accusing me of not trusting her. So I argued with her saying that I couldn't just trust her all of a sudden after years of being treated badly. And she ended up snapping at me, telling me to go to hell and that she didn't even want a daughter like me in the first place. And that just proved what I'd already known, that my mom was just being nice out of the blue so that she wouldn't get evicted and my grandparents and I would let her own the house legally. Well, too bad she showed me her true colors, so that's not happening anymore. She can go to hell for all I care. She doesn't want a daughter like me? Fine. She won't have me as a daughter anymore because I sure as hell wouldn't want a mother like her. Update 2. The legal process is finally complete and the house is now officially mine. My mother has already started the process of moving out. Initially, she had just a week, but my grandparents and I were kind enough to extend that to two weeks and now she has around four days to be gone. My grandparents are also planning to sell off the house they're residing in currently so that they can move in with me and take care of the house in my absence when I leave for college. I think it's a fabulous idea and I can't wait to start my new life. Update 3. Hey, so this is probably going to be my last update for a while now that things have finally begun to fall into place for me. My mother moved out today but not before she handed over the keys to me and reminded me very nastily that I'd regret this in the future. I don't understand why she's so bitter since she was lucky enough to find an apartment close enough to the school and her workplace on such short notice. It's a much smaller place, but she should learn to be grateful. Like I'm grateful for my wonderful grandparents and my friends who have been nothing but supportive of me ever since I let them know what I've been going through. I'm also thankful for you guys here because in spite of being complete strangers, Everyone here was really kind to me and I truly appreciate that so much. I'm typing this out on my old laptop in my old room in my old house but with a family who actually loves me now and in a few months I'll be moving away to start at a college of my choice. Now I'm finally living the life I always wanted and I really couldn't be happier about it. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.